Uh, good morning, everyone, and thank you for uh, you know, rising early and joining us here for the Roseville Business Council. Uh, my name is John Connolly. I'm president of the Twin Cities North Chamber of Commerce. We do this uh, in partnership with uh, the City of Roseville and the St. Paul Area Chamber of Commerce. Uh, great to see everyone here. Uh, lots of information to share this morning, uh, especially from Mayor Rowe. Uh, just a quick start off, I uh, want to recognize uh, Batsy, uh, Builders Association of the Twin Cities. Is Dave around here? Dave, I think, was at the front greeting everyone. They're our gracious hosts for this morning. I appreciate them uh, opening up their house for us. And just to give them a little shout out here, they do run a little event called the Parade of Homes. Uh, uh, about a five weekend uh, deal going on and some of those are in Roseville here. Uh, check it out if you get a chance uh, and the guidebooks uh, I believe you can get as you exit as well as at Holiday Gas Station stores. Okay, that's their commercial. Um, okay. uh, just wanted to thank everyone again uh, for being here. Uh, always check websites for events and programs that are coming up that are going to be relevant for your business and uh, that's at TwinCitiesNorth.org and uh, I want to hand it over now to uh, my uh, my friend here and give her an opportunity to share a little bit about St. Paul. Great. Thank you, John. Uh, my name is Shannon Watson. I am the Director of Public Affairs for the St. Paul Area Chamber, um, of which many of you are members. Thank you so much um, for being members and being part of the association and, and the, um, the great work that we're all trying to do in the East Metro. Um, I would also like to give a shout out. The builders are not only our hosts, they provided the coffee. So yay for the caffeination. All right, so this is one of our most popular um, events every year, um, and that is due to our speaker. <laughs> mayor Dan Rowe is in his second term um, as Roseville mayor. He was sworn in in January of 2011 um, and hit the ground running and has been running ever since. <laughs> um, he's going to tell you a little bit today, uh, state of the state, and um, I believe we'll have some time for Q&A at the end. So without further ado, Mayor Dan Rowe. Well, I guess uh, since I hit the ground running, that must be why I'm sweating all the time. But I uh, uh, want to thank you all for being here this morning and uh, 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 taking this opportunity to learn a little bit about the state of the city. Actually, not the state of the state. I'll leave that to others to take care of that, but uh, uh, the state of the city. And I do want to extend thanks also to uh, the Builders Association for hosting uh, these Rosal Business Council events, which had been uh, in their first few years at the Affinity Plus Credit Union Community Room. Uh, but uh, due to some uh, scheduling that they had, they needed to use that space, and so uh, Batsy was very generous to uh, allow us to use this space, and I think it's a, a beautiful place to have these uh, events. Uh, but on to uh, what we're here to talk about, which is the um, state of the city in Roseville. Uh, in recent years, or as in recent years, the news continues to be largely good for Roseville. Uh, our unemployment rate remains below the state's unemployment rate, which in turn also remains below the U.S. average, although those two are converging a little bit more recently. Uh, we have been benefiting from the strength uh, in both the business and housing sectors in Roseville. Uh, and that has resulted in tax base growth that spreads the tax burden more broadly in the city, uh, keeping the average taxpayer's property bill in check while the city is able to uh, make strategic key investments in our long-term success, much like in the private sector. Uh, we here in our local government in Roseville are acutely aware, and we see examples every day, uh, that the very healthy state in which we find ourselves as a community has, little, has a little bit to do with what we as a local government do, but has a whole lot to do with what is done day in and day out in the community by people who live here, work here, own businesses, and volunteer, and care about each other in Roseville. And I know I say that every year, uh, and in fact, I'll admit that I actually lifted that line almost verbatim from last year's speech. Uh, so if you look it up, you'll see that. Uh, but we really do see examples all the time of that in Roseville, and we all see this. Uh, I believe that's why we're all so invested in this place that we call home. So now a little bit about uh, what we as the city government have been doing over the last year and what's planned coming up. Uh, and remaining consistent with past I continue to organize this annual accounting uh, based on community aspirations that have been aggregated uh, from our last community visioning effort that we did in Roseville. And those aspirations are, uh, we in Roseville aspire to be a community that is welcoming, inclusive, and respectful. Uh, we aspire to be safe and law-abiding, economically prosperous with a stable and broad tax base. We aspire to be secure in our diverse and quality housing and neighborhoods environmentally responsible with well-maintained natural assets, 
physically and mentally active and healthy, well connected through transportation and technology infrastructure, and engaged in our community's success as citizens, neighbors, volunteers, leaders, and business people. So starting with our aspiration to be welcoming, inclusive, and respectful, as we survey the world around us, uh, in so many respects, this aspiration seems to be really challenged right now. Yet, at the local level, we also have a great opportunity to lead by our example of how to meet each other where we live, get to know each other and understand each other, and find ways to work together for our common interests. As a city government, we continued in 2017 to uh, have the Rose Imagine Roseville dialogues about race and government, uh, with discussions about the intersection of immigration policy and local law enforcement, as well as a town hall with Chief Rick Mathwig and Lieutenant Erica Scheider about policing in Roseville. As a result of the immigration policy discussion, the City Council affirmed police department policy to not inquire about immigration status unless necessary to the case. And we put that in place, uh, or the Council put in place a requirement that the City Council has to vote to change that policy. Local law enforcement officials, including our own chief, understand that for everyone in the community to be safe, everyone in the community must feel safe to call the police as either witnesses or victims of crime. Shortly after affirming the police department policy on immigration status, the City Council also adopted a broad policy statement for the city on inclusion. The statement promotes respectful conduct, equitable service, and diversity in the community. It condemns discrimination and pledges the city government to fairness and unbiased treatment of all. A key city council priority in 2017 and 2018 is called inclusive community and governments, governance. Uh, two tasks included under that uh, priority are continuing the Imagine Roseville community conversations and also uh, the city staff participating in GARE or the Government Alliance on Racial Equity. The City Council has asked our Human Rights Inclusion and Engagement Commission to review the uh, Imagine Roseville efforts that we've undertaken to date and recommend any changes that we can make to that uh, process to improve it going forward. Uh, we've also, uh, I should say a little bit about GARE. GARE is a Minnesota partnership of the League of Minnesota Cities and uh, two national organizations, uh, one called Race Forward and the other called the Haas Institute for Fair and Inclusive Society. Uh, and is part of a nationwide effort uh, for folks in local government to achieve uh, racial equity and to advance opportunities for all. We have 14 Roseville City staff who are representing uh, almost all the departments and almost all the pay grades in the city, uh, and they've already begun uh, participating in the GARE program this year, and we look forward to their recommendations coming out of those efforts. And under uh, welcoming and respectful, one recent and very personal example of the city's efforts uh, uh, was the fire department's response to a local family whose mother was hospitalized just days before Christmas. Uh, the mother was, as a result, unable to get Christmas presents for her three daughters, ages three, four, and seven. Uh, but the department tried and was unable to obtain help from local charity organizations due to the short notice before the holiday. Uh, but they went ahead and connected with a generous local resident and also contributed their own time and funds to buy and wrap presents for the kids and provide a holiday meal for the family. I think we are humbled and heartened by this example of caring and generosity that goes beyond just doing the job. In Roseville, we also aspire to be safe and law-abiding. And acts like that and countless others, uh, large and small, on a daily, daily basis, lead us in Roseville to be truly grateful for the men and women of great professionalism and character that make up our police and fire departments. Both departments are continuing to evolve to meet new challenges. Uh, for example, the fire department has completed the first phase of converting its staffing to full-time firefighters, while being supported by paid-on-call part-time firefighters as those firefighters transition out of the department through attrition. Uh, the department has taken a more proactive role in the past recent years uh, in fire safety inspections of local businesses and multifamily housing using that on-shift staff. For 2018 and going forward, the department is also taking on hotel inspections and multifamily licensing inspections in the city that were previously done by the state of Minnesota and by our community development department building inspector, inspectors. Uh, this change will free up those building inspectors at the city to better address new construction and remodeling inspections while not losing that key public safety aspect of providing safe lodging and housing in a community. 
Uh, also recently at the request of the fire department, the city council uh, enacted an ordinance to require sprinklers in a greater percentage of building remodels than before, uh, which will improve fire safety for more people than ever in the community. Changes taking place in the police department as well. Uh, longtime police lieutenant Lauren Razan recently retired uh, at a ceremony that I was pleased to attend, and others in the department have stepped up to accept new roles and responsibilities. 2017 saw the uh, police department put in place policy guidelines and try out and decide upon technology uh, for body cameras for all officers. Use of the cameras will be implemented in 2018 in an effort to provide better records for cases as well as greater confidence in the accountability and transparency of our policing efforts. In addition to implementing the body cameras, another priority for the police department has been uh, to have all sworn personnel receive 40 hours of crisis intervention training, which includes things such as decision making and de-escalation approaches. About half of the officers so far have completed the training uh, and the department is on target to complete the training in 2018. One result of, that's already been realized from this increased level of training is a number of notable instances in the city of effective de-escalation just in the past year, leading to safe outcomes for all involved. Uh, in continuing efforts to have a police force that more appropriately reflects the diversity of our community, uh, the Roseville Police Department is maintaining its policy of seeking community service officers, or CSO candidates, who can speak more than one language, and preferably languages that are spoken uh, at home in our local school districts. As most of us are aware, uh, the scourge of the opio opioid addiction crisis is a national public policy or a public safety and public health issue uh, that unfortunately affects us here in Roseville too. Roseville's first responders, like others around the country, have been saving lives over the last few years by administering emergency drugs like Narcan to overdose victims in an all too frequent number. The Narcan that has been available to our first responders in Roseville over the last two years uh, was provided initially through state grant funds uh, and more recently through generous support from the Roseville Police Foundation. We're grateful to have that life-saving medical solution, but more must be done by way of prevention before people get to the point of overdosing. Of course, much of that work has to be done at policy levels above local government, but we here can and will try to do as much as we can to be part of the solution. Uh, an example of that, starting in 2015, in order to keep unused medications from becoming someone's pathway to addiction uh, and to protect our waters from contamination, uh, the police and fire departments have made available medication disposal bags for relatively small amounts of leftover pills, capsules, and skin patches. Uh, the bags are very easy to use and can be placed in the trash once they are sealed. The bags are available at the Roseville Police and Fire Department offices during business hours. And for larger quantities of unused medications, the Ramsey County Sheriff's Department also has drop-off stations uh, at their St. Paul headquarters, uh, their Arden Hills substation, and at the North St. Paul City Hall. One nice effort to promote uh, public safety uh, locally is the Lights On program through which the police department can give out vouchers for headlight, turn signal, or similar repairs for motorists rather than tickets. The idea was begun by auto repair businesses outside of Roseville, uh, but was taken up enthusiastically by some of our local businesses. Uh, the reasoning behind the program is uh, to try to prevent vehicle equipment issues from becoming a reoccurring entrance into a cycle of tickets, unpaid tickets, warrants, and criminal records that can be very challenging for folks of limited means to get out of. Uh, one final effort in the area of public safety, but also in an environmental stewardship in the community, uh, was the targeted deer herd reduction that was done in early 2017 uh, using bait stations and USDA sharpshooters. About 20 deer were taken in that effort, uh, and currently the city is uh, conducting a uh, deer count this winter to uh, determine the impacts of that uh, herd reduction and whether there are, there are new steps that need to be taken by the community, uh, which will be reported to the city council uh, later this spring. Uh, in Roseville, we aspire to be economically prosperous. Uh, just recently, uh, I, along with city staff, visited a local medical technology business as part of our Business Retention and Expansion Program, or BRE program, uh, in conjunction with the Minnesota Chamber of Commerce. It was quite gratifying to hear repeatedly from that business how much they wanted to stay in Roseville. Location in Roseville was important to their future growth and success. 
The city is keenly aware that our existing businesses are our future businesses if we can at all help them to stay and grow here. The BRE program has identified local businesses that have, ha that have growth plans or space needs or workforce or production capacity needs. And in many but not all cases, the city has been able to connect those businesses with resources or possible sites. Uh, those connections never would have been made, however, without that BRE outreach. As mentioned, workforce needs continue to be a prime area of concern in the community, especially for our local health, tech, and trades businesses. Uh, there are worker shortages in those areas that have already been uh, identified and are projected into the future. And certainly, once again, the city can't solve that problem by itself, uh, but we uh, can bring together resources that can make a difference for those businesses, including uh, from both of our Roseville and Moundsville school districts, uh, as well as both of our chambers, uh, and also the county, among others. In addition to the local business visits, uh, the city, through its Economic Development Authority, has put in place a new website called Grow Roseville at growroseville.com. I, of course, encourage you all to check it out. Uh, this site is a one-stop resource for site selectors looking to locate or relocate a business in the community. Uh, the site contains information on local workforce and demographics, as well as quality of life and city and other resources for businesses. The Grow Roseville website resulted from a contract with a Minnesota-based company and I should say it has been receiving uh, strong reviews from our competitors in other cities. Uh, to put some numbers to these anecdotal uh, stories about uh, economic development in the community, uh, the city issued more than 3,800 building permits in 2017, uh, and the total valuation exceeded $75 million. Uh, that includes more than $12 million in residential permits, uh, $31 million in new commercial construction, and $32 million in commercial remodeling and alterations. In Roseville, we aspire to be secure in our diverse housing and neighborhoods. Uh, on the sub subject of permit statistics, in 2017, we saw the issuance of 20 new single-family residential home permits in Roseville. And additionally, uh, a key to diversity of housing, uh, a few new projects are also being built uh, with townhomes or, small ho uh, or houses on small lots uh, who, for folks who are not looking to have a yard to take care of. Uh, that is the type of housing that is in short supply in Roseville, and as part of the city's uh, comprehensive plan update, uh, the city council has identified a number of properties that will be guided in the future for those housing types. Another site that was rezoned in 2017 was the old armory site on North McCarran's in southeast Roseville. That site is now guided for single-family homes and has a new owner, and that owner is putting together plans and financing for single family, uh, a single-family development, uh, which may also include a variety of home sizes and types, similar to what I was talking about. Um, a big focus of the city over the last two years has been a joint uh, development with Maplewood and St. Paul of a vision for the Rice and Larpenter area of all three cities. Uh, the exciting news is that that vision draft is now complete after all this community input over the last couple of years. Uh, the plan will be presented to the three communities as well as Ramsey County leadership in the coming months, and it includes many opportunities for near and long-term projects uh, of varying sizes to revitalize the area. Uh, and I should say very important to successful implementation of that vision uh, will be continued engagement of local residents and businesses as well as the continued commitment uh, and progress by all of the cities and the county towards that implementation. As part of the city's ongoing commitment to quality homes for all renters in Roseville, our multifamily licensing and inspection program continues into, I believe, its fourth year. Uh, the big change, as mentioned earlier, uh, is that the fire department is taking on the inspections for the program this year. As Roseville continues our existing programs, like our neighborhood enhancement program, which is uh, residential and commercial nuisance code enforcement, uh, it's worthy to mention that the city, uh, through the Economic Development Authority, has contracted with a new uh, entity, the Center for Energy and Environment, or CEE, uh, to administer our rehabilitation loan and advisory programs for homeowners. Uh, the nice thing about CEE is that they also uh, offer programs uh, that Roseville residents can use uh, to take advantage, or businesses also can take advantage of uh, for loans for energy efficiency and other types of improvements beyond just the Roseville programs. Uh, Roseville aspires to be environmentally responsible with well-maintained natural assets. Uh, the city continues to reinvest in our water, sewer, and stormwater infrastructure, as well as our natural environment. Each year, more and more water and sewer lines are being replaced or relined in Roseville. 
Uh, and this year, the city is refurbishing our water booster pumping station, which is improving its reliability as well as energy efficiency. Plans are in the works to construct an uh, innovative stormwater reuse system at Evergreen Park in Roseville, which will be the second uh, reuse system of its type in the city. Uh, it'll be much like the installation that was done at Villa Park a few years ago. Uh, this uh, installation allows stormwater runoff to be stored for later use as irrigation uh, and also helps to treat the stormwater before it goes into the stormwater system. In the Parks and Recreation Department, the Natural Resources Program continues to thrive on volunteer work and leadership after having really blossomed during the Park Renewal Program. In addition uh, to that program in 2018, there will be a $354,000 DNR grant-funded habitat re restoration effort uh, that goes beyond the previous inv invasive species remediation uh, to add this habitat restoration in our community. Uh, and I should want note one area of additional focus this year in the environmental area will be the possible revisiting of a solar installation at the City Hall campus. In Roseville, we aspire to be physically and mentally active and healthy. Roseville continues to benefit from the efforts of the community-driven health initiatives uh, such as the Roseville Alzheimer's and Dementia Group and the Roseville Community Health Awareness Team, or CHAT. Uh, those entities are not city programs, though city staff does uh, provide insight and support, and both programs provide educational offerings on relevant topics for our uh, people in the community, including our aging population. Uh, additionally, and excitingly, I think, the uh, folks at CHAT are working with a company called New Tracks, which is a suburban Ramsey County transportation company, uh, to pilot a circulator bus loop in, the Rose, in southern Roseville in the coming months uh, with the hope of developing a permanent service, much like one that's in operation in White Bear right now. Um, of course, healthy and active lifestyles continue to rely on park amenities. In 2017, the city worked closely with local residents to plan two new parks in the community, that will be constructed in 2018. One is at County Road B and Cleveland Avenue, and the other is on Marion Street, just north of Larpenter in southeast Roseville. Another key public asset related to active living is, of course, the Cedar Home Community Building at the golf course, which is under construction right now, uh, and I just drove by this morning and saw it's continuing to progress uh, and hopes to be uh, open and complete uh, in June of this year. Uh, not only will that building serve as the clubhouse for the golf course, uh, but it will be a flexible rental event space uh, to complement our skating center and the smaller park buildings throughout the city. Uh, through a combination of park renewal funding and county funding, uh, several pathways and sidewalk connections were started or completed in 2017, uh, with some rolling over into 2018, uh, comprising about just under two miles in total. These are largely short connections in the system uh, as opposed to long uh, following a street for several miles. But what they do is they fill in gaps in the existing system and they make those connections between, uh, for instance, multifamily housing and uh, transit routes in the community. In Roseville, we aspire to be well connected. And I, uh, while this, and I talked about the pathways, but while the city continues our annual street rehabilitation program, which is something that's been going on for about 20 years, uh, where we do a rehabilitation of several miles of streets each year, uh, and that is endowment funded for the last 20 years. So basically we had a fund set up and we're able to use the, uh, the interest earnings in that fund to support the program without having to assess property owners for these street improvements. Uh, the funding uh, is uh, becoming more challenged and so the city is looking at ways to make sure and uh, keep that funding strong. Uh, so each year for the past three years, the city uh, has added a couple hundred thousand dollars to our tax levy to implement additional funding towards that street improvement program, and those uh, increases to the levy to support that will probably continue for the foreseeable future uh, until we stabilize that funding. As this aspiration also states, we aspire to be connected through technological infrastructure as well as roads. For the last several years, the city has partnered with school districts, neighboring communities, and the county library to complete city-owned fiber connections between various facilities and Roseville City Hall. And in 2017, fiber links were added to the CTV facilities in western Roseville and to school sites north of City Hall. And what these connections allow us to do is to provide city-provided uh, IT services to all of these entities uh, without dependence on costly private fiber connections uh, and at a cost uh, to those entities that is less than what a private sector uh, IT service would be. 
Uh, sort of related to that uh, is uh, something that I just have to mention because I'm on the Cable Commission, uh, but we did finally, after several years of negotiation, uh, complete a new 10-year cable franchise with Comcast, uh, which will serve our local cable TV and Internet customers. Uh, but the reason I mention it here is that a part of that agreement uh, allows, uh, or Comcast is providing uh, Internet connection and data services uh, at a negotiated rate for a couple of the entities and communities that participate in the Ro Roseville IT services that aren't yet on that fiber network. So it's important to have that connection uh, there in the community. In Roseville, we aspire to be engaged in our community's success. And I talked about a number of these engagement efforts over the last uh, few moments here, uh, but I just wanted to recap a little bit of that here in this section. Uh, we as leaders in the community know the importance of people being engaged. Without that engagement, uh, communities, and especially first-ring suburbs like Roseville, can decline very precipitously. Uh, so over the last year, we've seen many examples of engagement in our community. Uh, Roseville's commitment to the use of volunteers has continued to grow since we established a volunteer coordinator position in the city a few years ago. The natural resources volunteers I mentioned uh, just a moment ago are just a part of that. In fact, in 2017, more than 1,500 people volunteered in various capacities for the city of Roseville, including over 250 new volunteers who hadn't participated before. And all in all, they contributed about 4,000 hours of valuable services to the community. Our local businesses are also engaged, as I mentioned, through efforts like the Lights On program uh, and the Roseville Police Foundation that I also mentioned, as well as other uh, park support organizations and event sponsorships in the city. Our residents have been engaged in discussions about how uh, to make a difference related to race in our community through the Imagine Roseville program that I mentioned, uh, as well as other programs and efforts of other groups in the community. And continuing a long tradition in the Parks Department, the planning of those two new parks on Cleveland and Marion uh, involved extensive neighborhood outreach and also this year included new techniques to engage the immigrant community around the Marion Street site. And I talked about the Rice and Larpenter vision, and as that is involved, uh, uh, there have been a lot of opportunities for engagement of both the residents and businesses in the area. And as I said, that's going to have to continue in order to make that uh, vision a success at Rice and Larpenter. I'll also mention uh, that the Roseville Comprehensive Plan update uh, will be adopted later this year, and that also has involved a lot of uh, input from the community, especially uh, on purpose targeted input to neighborhoods surrounding areas that are proposed to have a change in use, uh, because that's something that we felt we didn't do as well as we could have last time. While our city newsletter continues to be a primary source of information about city government and activities, uh, platforms such as social media and nextdoor.com are growing as a means to connect not only with the city, uh, but with each other in the community. I think uh, the percentage in my own neighborhood of uh, folks who are on Nextdoor has gotten up to 25%, and that's pretty significant, uh, and those numbers vary across the city. Uh, and I should say also, and I mentioned it a little bit under the, uh, the topic of Imagine Roseville, but there are a number of uh, non-governmental groups in the community, such as Do Good Roseville, who are quite engaged in local issues and important local conversations. And that's a part of that engagement of each other in the community. So I think I can speak for our fellow elected officials in Roseville, as well as city staff, in saying that while we will always have challenges to face, some great and others small, we have much to be thankful for and proud of as we continue to face those challenges and celebrate our successes together. And as a result, the state of Roseville is indeed strong with great promise for the future. Thank you very much. And I think there's a chance for questions, which I, I don't know if I have any answers. but. Hmm. I'm not seeing a bunch of people raising their hands either. That's, that's, maybe I just covered th things too well. Not even my plants are raising their hands. That's amazing. Oh, there we go. It's on. Here we go. Questions? 
Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Rowe. This was a great presentation. I love to hear about the partnerships. So I'm Mary Jo McGuire, Ramsey County Commissioner for this area, and I love the partnerships that we have with Roseville, and I know we're working on the Rice and Larpenter, and we, I just met with our Public Works Director, and I know he's been meeting with yours, and I just wonder if you want to comment any more about the partnerships that we do have with the city, the state, uh, the county and the federal government and, and, why, and how that's so important for the work that we do. Thank you and that, that was a great setup question. I'm glad, I'm glad, uh, glad I told you to ask that. Yeah, right, no, uh, well that's a very, very important thing. I mean, and the Rice Larpenter is just one example of that. But I mean, throughout everything that we do as a local government, uh, you know, we, we're just part of a system of different levels of government and different responsibilities. Uh, and public works is one that really comes to mind because of course we've got state roadways going through Roseville, we've got county roads going through Roseville, and of course the city streets. Uh, and everybody has different responsibilities. Uh, and the example that always uh, comes up is when there's a new development proposed and there needs to be perhaps new accesses to county roads. And I mention that especially because of the county folks that are here. Um, and and, and you know, there, are, there are rules and requirements that different folks have about how those decisions are made. And so we have people in our community that are very interested in a new project and a new development, uh, and they really want to have access to a county road for their, their customers. Uh, and so we have to work with the county and have a good, good working relationship to make sure that we can do whatever we can to make, make it work and find a win-win solution for everybody. Uh, and you know that works uh, at the state level as well. We've got state projects on 35W uh, coming up uh, that we've had some conversations about how can we connect with that. We did uh, some pathway work underneath Lexington, or, uh, yeah, underneath Lexington when we did the Lexington Avenue, when the state did the Lexington Avenue bridge replacement. So there are those, those partnerships and of course we talk a lot about uh, about the, um, the public works side of things, but there's also, we work with, uh, with DEED on economic development activities, and we work with other uh, folks and in our neighboring communities on a number of things uh, as we're doing our business. Other questions? Yes, uh, raise your hand if uh, I can bring the mic to you. Thank you, uh, Mayor Rowe. I I was wondering about your uh, diversity efforts. Of course, when you're talking about diversity, you have to be starting from some central current uh, inclusion point mm -hmm. and moving towards something. And I was wondering about where the city of Roseville is sitting currently regarding the diversity of the population and what your goals, do you have specific benchmark goals to reach further inclusion? I th you know, I think we've got a pretty good handle on, on what the uh, diversity of the community is, especially as we look at our school district um, and the students in the district. Um, uh, certainly that's, that's sort of where we see the most diversity in the community and some of that, you know, is, is not all residents of Roseville, but certainly we know that that's changing and I don't have specific uh, numbers right at, at my fingertips here. Uh, but uh, we also know that there is a change happening in our community and, and we're becoming a more diverse community both in terms of age and in terms of various uh, other measures of diversity. Uh, and so what we do is we keep track of, of, you know, what those sort of broad statistics are. We want to look at our workforce as a city government, as one part of that. Uh, we also want to make sure that what we're doing as a city uh, is conscious of the whole community and making sure that, uh, and that's part of that GARE effort, uh, is uh, part of making sure that uh, we don't inadvertently have rules, regulations, or requirements that, that, uh, that adversely affect different people in the community. So I think there's much more to come on that. and We're still uh, in early stages of sort of getting our, our act together in that regard, but we continue to be focused on that. Other questions? Morning, Dan. Uh, thank you so much for your presentation, uh, Mayor Rowe. What a fantastic and uh, going on here in Roseville. Uh, Jim Johnson, University of Northwestern. I noticed uh, in the presentation not a lot was referenced in education as far as what's going on at the elementary level up through post-secondary in Roseville. And I know there's a lot going on uh, with uh, some of the reconstruction of the buildings and that. Could you talk mm -hmm. a little bit about the good things of education right now? 
Uh, I can talk a little bit about it. Uh, it's a little bit outside my area of expertise because, of course, the school districts are responsible for a lot of that. Uh, but I can say, as, as you mentioned, that both districts did pass bond referendums in the last year, uh, and that is to do a significant amount of funding of facilities work uh, in both districts. Um, there is a need for things like classroom space. Uh, there is need for things like some flexible space that can be used for newer types of programs that are in schools these days that weren't there when the schools were built. 20, 30, 40, and 50 or more years ago. Uh, and so those are the types of things that the districts are doing. They're trying to sort of get to a 21st century uh, facilities uh, uh, um, framework for uh, what they're doing to educate uh, uh, kids these days. And it's not just uh, sort of your traditional um, types of things either. I mean, they're doing a lot of work at, at, at least at Roseville Area High School in terms of some of their vocational types of, of, of training efforts as well. So I think that's, that's a key part of what they're looking at in the school districts in terms of making sure that, that the, the, the kids that are coming out of the schools are going to be able to be successful in this, uh, this, this new uh, world that we live in. Uh, so that's, that's a lot of what's going on, but definitely uh, the school districts are focusing a lot in those areas. And I did mention also uh, some of their workforce uh, connection efforts with uh, mentoring programs, uh, and work shadowing and things like that that are going on. Just to emphasize that, uh, uh, Roseville Schools is uh, doing a job fair, career fair, uh, April 10th. Uh, more information uh, on uh, the Roseville Schools website too as well. Just wanted to emphasize that. Yeah. And the city's uh, helping to support and sponsor that as well. Thank you, too, uh, Mayor Rowe, again. Um, I have a question. You know, it seems like, uh, you know, we hear about the Amazon effect and in, in how it's affecting retail. And Rosedale continues to grow. Do you want to talk about, about that, why it seems like people talk about retail being down, but we're still seeing investments? And we're very happy that we're seeing those investments, certainly. Uh, so uh, thank you for mentioning that. And it's something that I don't know that we, you know, at the city completely know the answer to either, because you're right, there is that whole, the whole online and Amazon effect uh, in terms of retail. Um, but I think it's fairly clear in a number of areas, not just in the retail area, but in a lot of uh, business endeavors, that Roseville's location is pretty key to our success. Um, and uh, so I, I'd have to say that that's probably what's helping us push against the tide of sort of online retail. Uh, and it doesn't mean that we don't have our problems in retail in Roseville, too. I mean, we do still have, you know, transitions. Uh, we've, you know, had the, 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 the uh, businesses like uh, the Circuit Cities that aren't here anymore, you know. And so there still is change and turmoil in the industry itself. But I think we've been able to, to keep our occupancy rates pretty good. And certainly that, that reinvestment that Rosedale has been making, not just in the last year and a half or so, but even prior to that in that uh, site is, is something that we, we can be uh, thankful for and, and, you know, hopefully... Uh, as the whole marketplace and industry evolves, you know, the new model, whatever it is, is something that Roseville can continue to take advantage of. And certainly, uh, though that might be well after my time as mayor, uh, hopefully the leadership in the community will continue to pay attention to that and be ready to be responsive. Time for a couple more. I see back in the back over Hello, Mr. Mayor. I'm Mike Kantmeyer with IPS Solar. And we recently moved to uh, Roseville and are excited to be part of the community, especially the business community. But uh, curious about your uh, ideas and thoughts on sustainability for the city. And that is that sustainability is something that's very uh, important to us as we look at our operations in the city. In fact, we are uh, uh, we have I think we're a step two in the Minnesota Green Step Cities program, and we're very close to being step three out of the, the now five steps. I think they added one uh, since we started in the program. Doesn't seem fair, they keep raising the bar for us. But, uh, but so there, there are things along those lines that we're doing and uh, you know some of the next steps, I was just talking actually to the city manager yesterday are things like uh, sustainable procurement policies, um, and uh, looking at um, uh, some of our other uh, efforts in terms of how we manage our resources at the city. But that's something that has been a focus for a number of years. That actually came out of our Imagine Roseville visioning process in 2005, I think it was, as a very strong desire of people in the community to make sure that we were focused on sustainability. Um, you know, besides sort of environmental sustainability, we do focus quite a bit at the city on financial sustainability of our operations as well. Uh, so we converted from a five-year look 
look forward in our capital improvement planning to a 20-year look forward. Uh, so we make sure we are really accounting for the cost of what it's going to take to maintain our infrastructure because that's a big part of what local government does. As I mentioned, the water and sewer and roads and all of that. Uh, and so we've really been very conscious uh, of making sure that we set aside the funds necessary to keep those infrastructure elements uh, 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 able to be in good shape and, and in good repair going forward. So sort of, you know, we've been looking at sustainability across a lot of different areas, not just necessarily in the environmental part of it, but certainly things like our geothermal uh, system at the skating center that helps uh, you know, with our cooling of the skating surface and, and uh, capturing some of the energy related to that uh, has been an important uh, thing that we did a few years ago and we continue to look at ways to, to in, in expand that system to the rest of the City Hall campus in terms of uh, taking advantage of that, that uh, heat storage. One or two more maybe? Oh, it's, it's a council member. This will be a tough question. <laughs> Why did I vote the way? No. <laughs> well, we could go there, but I won't. Um, so thank you, Mayor Rowe, for representing everything that's going on in our community. Um, kind of to tag on, oh, I'm sorry, Lisa Lollaberty, city council member. I wanted to kind of add on to what Commissioner McGuire had stated about us working and um, needing support from other entities. And so my question is, do you want to talk about how, for the first time in my service, we've actually created legislative priorities because we feel there are certain situations in the city of Roseville where we need the legislature to be aware of our concerns? No, that's a great point. And, and I think, you know, the city probably has had legislative priorities at some level more informally in the past, but we did as a city council adopt a, a slate of priorities that we are going to be focusing on with our legislators and with the legislature uh, going forward that are things that will, uh, that are important to the community, uh, both to sort of, you know, things that the local government does, whether it's election reforms and or helping us with the cost of the Minlars uh, fiasco, uh, or uh, whether it's things that help our businesses in the community, uh, either individual businesses in the case of the legislation for Bent Bristillery, uh, or more broadly across the community in terms of some of the deed support programs and funding for those. Uh, we have definitely uh, set up a, a formalized list of our legislative priorities, and we've asked our legislators in to uh, hear about those, and we've met with legislators and continue to do so, uh, and plan to be active also as uh, testifiers at the state capitol as, as appropriate. So thank Thank you for mentioning that and of course that's something uh, that Lisa knows a lot about and is very uh, very focused on as one of our leaders in the community okay any more questions all right the one thing that we want to do um, before we leave um, is something that we generally do at the top of the hour but because of the uh, because of the video we decided to do at the end um, so if we could go I'll go around and introduce ourselves to each other um, and to the mayor and then maybe at the end of that uh, mayor Rowe, if you could talk about um, you know, you have a, a room full of, of business leaders, um, how best they can activate um, and, and be part of the success for Roseville. 